Welcome back to Close to Broke, everyone. My name is Kieran, and today we're doing things a little bit different. We're playing in a private club. Haven't done this in a long time. It's exciting. I'm here for a friend, and I'm here with Mike, our editor. He's actually in town to help us film for the next video, which is going to be our special 200th video. Super excited to be here. Let's get into some poker. Let's have some fun, and let's gamble it up. Let's see where these chips fall by the end of the session. All I'm going to say is don't let the stakes fool you. It might only be 2-3, but you'll see very quickly that that is not the case. I'm in for $3,600, and we've already got a hand to go over. An early position makes it 20. There's a couple of callers, and it gets to me on the button. With ace-queen, super easy 3-bet. I make it 120. Two of the players call. We're going three ways. At least we're in position. And luckily for us, it's going to be pretty simple when the flop comes out ace-high. There is a flush draw out there, but when both these opponents check over to me, I think c-bet. The only thing is we want to make it a little bit smaller, I think. I go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, both of our opponents fold, but great to take down the first hand of the session. Some time has gone by and sprinkle in a little card deadness and not a whole lot has happened. There is a $15 straddle from a middle position player. I should mention that you can straddle any amount in any position in this game, which makes things kind of hectic. I'm next to act and I go ahead and raise to 50. Only the straddler calls. We're going off to a flop here that comes ace, king, jack. Definitely going to be good for us here. So I see bet for 50. Our opponent calls and the turn is a deuce once again shouldn't change anything all of this board is all over me i'm gonna have all the straights all the two pairs all the set combos all the two pairs so i go ahead once again and bet for 150. obviously my hand is irrelevant at this point we're just repping that we got it our opponent once again makes a call getting a little scary and even more so when the river comes at three of hearts not that it changes anything but you know I've got to go for it. If there's a chance that my opponent has a, a small middling pair like King-10 or Queen-Jack, we've got to go for it. we got to get those hands to fold. I didn't get to this point to do anything else. I go ahead and throw out a meaty bet for $275. If I'm being fair, a little meatier would have probably been better. Either way, my opponent goes deep into the tank before eventually deciding on a fold. Uh, luckily for us there, we were able to turn our nines into a bluff. I don't know if I'd advocate for it, but hey, it worked. Our session is continuing to come along. This brew is slowly brewing, but same ingredients, a lot of limping. I look down at pocket eights. I'm gonna go ahead and isolate here after the two limbs to 25 and both players call. Flop comes out ace six five. Once again, I think we have a pretty good spot to see bets. If we had kings or even queens, maybe our hand does do well with some checkbacks. As if we're ahead, we're still super far ahead. And if we're behind, we're really behind. So I go throw out a little C bet. 35 bucks. The second limper calls and turn is a seven of diamonds. At this point with the action checking over to me, I don't remember that I have the eights. I think that I have pocket nines. And if I remember that I had pocket eights, I think that I'd be going for a double barrel sometimes. If I can get my opponent to work really, you know, fold really weak aces, uh, that'd be great. But in reality, in, in poker, let me teach you guys something. You shouldn't be basing your whole strategy around getting people to fold top air because that won't work. But if we can get middling pairs to fold, and sometimes we can even get like a six, like seven, eight to call even, that's good too as a merge play. But either way, I check it through. The river cards of five of clubs pairing the board. Our opponent bets $25. It's a nice blocker bet here. I go ahead and make the call and our opponent shows us the bad news. Shows ace 10. Lucky for us there. I think the only thing we could have done different probably is by throwing a little bet ourselves on the turn and maybe going for a big barrel in the river. But once again, can't begin top pairs to fold. There's a lot of action to follow in this following hand, so get ready as I can barely say it myself. Early position makes it 20. There are two callers of this 20, as you can see, very passive. And then I look down at a premium, ace, king here. As I told you earlier, this is a 2-3 game and people are opening for like 8x minimum. So I think it makes sense here to make a bigger squeeze and I make it 150. Even that might be a little too small. Either way, the action gets all the way to the big blind who eventually goes all in for 300. And because the action has been reopened, everyone seems a little hesitant and decides to fold. They were right. If they just called, I was definitely going to be jamming. They are definitely right. They called. I was definitely going to be jamming. I put in the call. We were out one board for max pain. Max blood. The flop looks great as it comes out. Ace, 10, 9. Turn queen, river, jack. We now have a straight. And somehow our opponent also has a straight with king, 10. Got there on the river. Couldn't hold off. Couldn't, couldn't fend him off. But hey... Everyone loves a chop pot, right? 
gonna go down as the weirdest missed session update of all time. We were trying to get a session in before I had to come to dinner, but I was so car dead that I just, I couldn't even force it. Instead of being a donk, I decided to come to dinner still, but afterwards I'm gonna head back to the game. But for now, I think we're exactly even or up a hundred bucks. So hopefully we can get some more money back. We'll see. As the session continues along forward, there's a cutoff straddled 10 bucks, the button limps that, and then the big blind decides to throw out a three bet or I guess an isolation for 40. With the action on me now in the middle position, I look down at pocket jacks. We have a clear three bet here. I make it 200. I want to play for stacks here. My opponent has somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand ish dollars behind. Looks like a good spot to get this thing going. Only the initial razor calls and we're going off to a flop that couldn't be much better as it comes jack four three. This is the problem when the hand is this good. It's hard to get value from it. Outside of set over set or an over pair, which are a little less likely, this board's super dry, so when the action checks to me, I decided to throw out a really tiny bet for 85 bucks. If you guys are doing the math, that's less than a quarter of the pot. Pretty much damn near a blocker bet. Our opponent decides on a fold. Little question for y'all. What is your favorite bad hand? It's easy to say a hand like aces, ace king, or jack 10 suited, but I'm saying we're all suckers for a couple of these junkers, so... Let me know which one that is, and mine is the Kobe Bryant, or the Black Mamba. So in this next hand, with a button raised to 15, and I'm in the small blind with 24, deuce four clubs, I'm in there, baby. So is the big blind. The flop comes out, giving me bottom pair. I don't know if there's any other pair for this hand, but either way, the initial raiser C bets for 25, I make the call, and the turn card comes the ace. At this point, not a whole lot changes here. I do make a gutter, or now I can have a gutter draw at this. I even consider bluffing, but I realize that this is probably better for my opponent than me. So when I check it to him and he bets 50, uh, why not call? I go ahead and do the call. Let's do that. River card comes out the 10 of clubs. Once again, not changing a whole lot here. The diamond draw misses. And I think that there's a small chance I might have to hero call unless he goes massive here. Luckily for us, when I check, he pretty quickly checks it back. But when he checks it back, that means that there's some showdown value or some showdown equity, which he shows pocket jacks. More action is still to come here. There's a $6 button straddle on. By the way, I don't really like the button straddle. I think it's kind of cheating, but it is there for a reason. I guess you can exploit it if it's there. There's a couple of limps here from early position, and I go ahead and look down at Jack-10 off. At this point, I'm just kind of trying to get a little splashy. I've been pretty tight for most of the session as I just haven't had anything good come my way. I make it $50 as an isolation. The cut off and the button call. The flop comes out, giving me an open ender. It's a good spot for me. I don't know if it's that good for my range, but who the hell cares? I've got an open ender. It can't be that bad. I throw out a small C bet for 75, a little less than half pot. Only the button makes a call here. Who's definitely one of the tightest players at the table. Pretty solid. And the turn car comes the beautiful offsuit eight. Doesn't change anything as far as it pertains to flush draws. But you know what it does do? It gives me this thing called the nuts. You know what I shouldn't be doing is checking. But I check. I realize now that my opponent, or at least in real time, I feel like my opponent's going to be on the tighter side. And I don't think that he'd ever be bluffing at this, but I think that there's a small chance if I show some weakness, he might call me down lighter on a later street. Outside of top pairs, there's just not a whole lot of two pair combinations for my opponent to have. But either way, he checks it back and the river card comes at three of spades. I end here with the nuts still. He has about 400 in his stack left, and I got these beautiful plaques in my hand, and I'm going to send it all here in the middle. Don't care about balance. I'm just trying to get as much money as I can in this spot. Call me selfish. Who cares? I put him all in, putting out the plaques, and my opponent snap calls. It's a beautiful sight to see. Our opponent can literally not win this hand. I show my hand, but although he can't win this hand, he can't chop this hand, as he shows Jack-10 as well. God, really? We've been waiting all day for this. Dang it. Very last hand of note here. There's a $15 button straddle. An early position goes ahead and limps. The action's on me in middle position. I go and isolate with a suited ace. At this point, the button straddler decides to three bet to 160. The button straddler is definitely capable of some moves here. So when the action folds to me for only $100 more, I think against our opponent who only three bet, our hand's good enough to continue with. And we're both playing plenty deep as we both have well over $3,000 in our stack. I go ahead and make the speculative call and we're rewarded immediately when we get top pair here. At this point, we have a pretty easy check call, which we do for 80. And the turn card comes a king of diamonds. I once again check and oddly enough, I think my opponent should be betting here with a lot of his range, but he ends up checking it back. And when he does check it back, I think that we can pretty credibly now range him. 
And when the river card comes out, the five of spades. I think I should have thought about this a little longer, but I was just thinking I should get my hand to showdown. But although, albeit, might be a little, little, little tiny bit thin here, I think throwing out a small river bet makes a lot of sense. I just realized that the backdoor flush totally breaks out. And while well, my opponent checks back the turn, although he can have some aces here, and we're just going to die to that when that happens, he's going to have a lot of, like, queens through nines. And those hands are going to consider calling here. So when I check here, I think it's a bit of an error. And I allow him to just check back all of his showdown value immediately and doesn't have to face any bit or any trouble. And I think that's the problem here. Either way, he checks it back. We show him we're good. That's going to bring our session to a close. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get any more value there on the river. But a pretty session to end things off. I can do this with my eyes closed. Well, 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 as you guys can see, I am back home now, and the session has come to an end. We're into the game for 3,600 and out for 41, just shy of 41, I think it was 4080 was what it was exactly. Uh, expect a wonderful episode next, it's gonna be a ton of fun, it'll be me playing at the Hustler, and it'll be a very special episode 200, which has a massive announcement for all of y'all. Either way, that's gonna do it for me here, have you guys, have a wonderful day, we'll see you guys soon, stay happy, sell more importantly, we're gonna go to the tables, doses! Dime lo porque o no entiendo, mi gente must really need Jesus. He said real blood, I never seen a crypt and I believe it.